Okay, folks, so let's do it. Let's, um, let's roll through this in the sense of this is one of our expectations for the activities that you have been funded to do over the last eight to 10 months. So as you all know, working through evaluation is a really important aspect of the CDAT activities so that we can ensure that one, we're gathering the data and the evidence that we can feed back to the ministry that demonstrates that your activities are addressing harm minimisation and primary prevention. So we've got some simple instructions at the top of the document for you. However, all of the CDOs are there to assist you to work through this. So if you're not certain, please just reach out. So instructions at the top, very simple, see that name, name of the person filling it out, contact details so that we can ring you if you've got any questions. So what we've actually done is we've based it fairly closely to your action plans. So the data that we're looking for is a brief description of, of your activity. You'll have some of that information already populated within your action plan. So what do we do? Copy and paste. Don't reinvent. Then um, if, I have to put my glasses on. So did, is, we've had a question, sorry, come up about what about surplus funds? If you've got surplus funds left over, the next box down actually just gives us an idea whether or not you have actually expended your funds. So give us some context and detail in there if you haven't expended all of your funds. We do anticipate that some of you won't have spent all of your money. And it is usually what we would look to do is say, mm -hmm, well, you're not gonna get, you know, we have to hold that back. But we're not going to hold it back from you. We just want to see what you're actually going to do with your money, that it is still in line with the activities that you've told us about. So again, have the conversations with us. We'll walk you through those, those spaces. So the next, the next few boxes down are literally um, some copy and paste as well. So what was the name of your activity? What was the objective? Again, chuck it over from the action plan. Did you achieve your objectives? Um, provide any additional information. Now, again, this additional information really helps us to identify back to the ministry that what you're doing does address the harm minimisation and primary prevention space. Did you have to adapt? We know that some of you have adapted. There's been interruptions. You've done a pivot halfway through. Explain it to us in there and paint us a picture. Tell us a story. So why do we want those stories? Anybody? That's it, absolutely. And it, it again gives us the information that we're able to pull some of this data, promote the activities of what you're doing. So it's got multi-pronged approaches and multi-pronged touch points with what you're doing in your activities and how we promote the program. So the next bit down, really, really difficult stuff, tick and flick boxes. And you literally click on the box. It's all you have to do. So do that, fill that in. These, these areas are the areas that we've identified, that are identified within, and as we all know, working in programs, we have KPIs. So this links directly back to some of those KPIs, and it is literally data collection for us as well. A further down, we talk about data collection, and that's how you've gathered your information. So how have you done that? Have you done it through case studies, interviews, surveys? formal, informal surveys, informal and informal interviews. If there is, where we've got other, just add, um, add information under that so that we've got that dialogue there. The measurements. So again, this is about the data. So how many people attended your sessions? And these are going to vary. So depending on what type of activity you've done, you would make these relevant to the type of information that you've collected from there. So if you have done an event, Fairfield's a really good example of that, of how many people came along, was there something else that you did, what sort of information you've handed out, what sort of resources. If you're able to let us know what type of resources you supplied, not just tick a box and say, yes, we did, where did you get your resources from? Was it from other services within your community? Was it from your room? Was it from Drug Info? Was it from us? Where did it come from? Let us know, because we then also build upon that. We share that information with other CDATs. This is all about sharing. That's, what, that's what's come from these last two days. We don't have to reinvent a wheel. We don't have to think of these things on our own. We can take 
ideas, adapt them, use them and do those sorts of that work in that space. Now these next ones are definitely like these are KPIs. Whilst you may not have a lot of information around these this year, we will be working with you to collect this data in all of your activities. So these again are the KPIs and they're, in, they're really intrinsic KPIs to the contract of CDAT. Health want to see, well the Ministry want to see, are the activities that you're delivering having any influence in assisting people to change their behaviours and their attitudes towards alcohol and drugs? Are they having an increase of knowledge of what risks are associated with alcohol and drugs? And are they able to, we said the same thing twice, want to change their use and then there's behaviour. And it's also about, I might need to change that, sorry. Um, it's also about are they able, are they better informed on where they can find assistance? So those three questions are really intrinsic to what we're looking to gather. So every, I keep repeating myself. It's all important stuff, basically. So please don't miss any boxes. If you have any difficulties or you're not sure on how to answer it, get in touch with your community development officer and lovely staff, please stand. Come join me, all of you now. Have your moment in the sun. Josh, Chloe, Abby, Tina, Dan, and both. So these are the fabulous people that you all get to work with as your community development officers. These are the people that provide me with um, the information of what happens on the ground of what else do you need? What are the things that you're feeling? What are they feeling? How is it that we can support you? And I'm going to take this opportunity right now to also say that it has been an overwhelming response that we have received in regards to this conference. The fact that we have kept you all engaged, that you've all looked forward to the next session, that you've all participated, real strong like connection has come from it. Relationships have been developed, conversations have been had, and that for us as a team is really important. That is something that we work hard to do. These guys came into it very green. They've been thrown many an obstacle in their time. They have come through and the, the phrase has been coined, we've been building the plane as we fly these last 12 months. And they have piloted with me, attended with me, and not had to use the exits, the uh, emergency exits. Although at times I'm pretty sure they would have liked to have pushed me out of the plane. However, we've gotten there. So I really want you guys to thank them for the work that they do as well. Thanks guys. And we're here to help you to get you through whatever obstacle, whatever challenge, whatever conversation comes up, be it controversial, be it just the straight line, let us have those conversations, let us support you through this. And what I'd love to be able to do is say that we're the team that's going to take us through to our 25th anniversary of the program and let's all celebrate that together. It's a little way off. But next year at the conference, I'd like it to be your voices that we hear more of, share more of your stories, share more of your activities, tell us what it is that you're doing in your communities and let's share that with each other. So if you've got any questions, point them at these guys. <laughs> Sorry, I just <laughs> knock things off. Sorry, Josh, get all excited. He told me to ramp it up. <laughs> Maybe not, not that way. But have conversations, let it, let's, let's get behind you and let's continue this fabulous work that CDAT has been doing for over 20 years. So thanks very much and thank you. Thanks, Nick. Bucket hats for everyone. <laughs> okay, one more thing before I get off the stage and hand the microphone back to Nick is the evaluation, but well, we want to be evaluated as well. Up on your screen, the big screens, there will be QR codes. Please take a photo of your QR code. Don't you shake your head at me, Amanda Nicholas. You won't be flying home, you'll be walking and you've got a limpy leg. <laughs> That'll be a long walk to Gunnedah. 
So please give us your feedback. We will be sending this out again. I will know whether or not we've got the results in because I'll be counting. We know who's been here. We know how many have been in the room. So we re it's really important to us that we get your feedback, that we know that we've, that we've given you the information that you've been looking for and tell us what else you'd like to know. So thanks very much, guys. <laughs> Look at you, you like paparazzi. I love it. <laughs> we'll also send, we'll send you a link. Yeah, we will send you a link. Yeah, so it's, but thank you for all being so enthusiastic, pretending that you're taking a photo, if nothing else. So thanks. Um, over to you. I've, I've done my bit, not hearing from me again. Ladies and gentlemen, Gail Easton.